No, I'm just gonna have to go back and and, and my my internet has been so in and out and power all day. So yeah, it's like, trying to work on drawings earlier today was was worthless because I'd get like five minutes into it and I'd be auto saving every two or not auto. You know what I mean? So it was like yeah, yeah. I got been, you. It's just been kind of touch and go all day trying to work on stuff. Well, sometimes it's better to watch than to try and model it with me because you'll always miss something. You know, I'm going oh, faster. Oh, I'm sitting back. I got the popcorn. I got it. Yeah, I got it all. Yeah. I got some fresh yeah. coffee. All of it. Awesome. Okay. So we've gotten our fillet of groove in and got our groove on. We're going to knock those out. Um, I'm going to zoom. I'm going to scroll down. Let me zoom out a little bit. So now we have a thread and it doesn't matter if we put the thread or the chamfer in here because we don't have a distance. It goes all the way to the filleted groove. So you do want to put your filleted groove in first, but now I'm just going to put in my thread. I always do the thread before the chamfer and then I don't have to think about it, but it wants me to select the surfaces. Notice that full depth is off, but it has a depth already here. So I'm just going to say that it is full depth, right? It's a full depth of this shaft because it's stopped by the filleted groove. And do you see um, that it is not 0.75? So you don't want to just allow it to say how far it is, even though it stops there. You want to say full depth and allow that to be corrected. Notice that it picked up the diameter of the shaft. And that is the diameter of our threads because that's the tallest point. Those are the peaks of the threads on the outside and we cut in the teeth or the dells of the thread. Now notice that there's a seven UNC and we are looking for an eight UNC. So there are two coarse thread designations in here. Be really careful and grab that eight UNC. Class 2A, it's right hand unless otherwise specified, and that would have an LH beside it if so. And I'm just going to say okay. So it doesn't matter at what end that you select when it's full thread, full depth. Now I'm going to put that chamfer on while I'm working on that side, and this is a distance times an angle. I can go ahead and mark this one off. We have a distance times an angle right here. So here's distance times angle. I'm going to put in 0 0.03, and it's 45 degrees, and that's that's pretty customary. Now, it wants me to select the face because it has two edges on the face. We have to select the edge that we want, and this is a lead-in. And when I say lead-in, it, it actually um, makes kind of a cone on the end of something to help center it, and um, then also... It helps center it and it also helps start the, those threads. It would be harder to start threads if it had a flat end. All right, so I've got this and now I've got a hole. And that's the last thing that we have here. And this hole is on the side of a curved object. And so if I try and start a hole and I'm gonna go just to my view here and it doesn't matter right now which side you put it in top bottom left right because this part is the same all the way around right now but it will not let me draw or select the face of a curved surface so what we have to do first is we have to put in a plane and that plane wants to be right at the apex so that would be at the tangency we want it to be tangent right at the widest part of our circle. So let's see what we have here. We have tangent through an edge and we don't have that. We don't have a point, but we can be parallel to a plane because I have some planes right here in the middle of my part. I could be tangent to that, either the top or the bottom, or I could be tangent to this, either left or right. So I'm gonna say tangent to a surface parallel to a plane, and I'm gonna go to my home view. Now I'm going to select this surface. Now I can come over here and grab this plane and it will make that the plane that I'm created parallel to that 
tangent to that surface. And if I look at this, it's absolutely touching the apex of that western quadrant. Now we'll turn this off. We can turn this off now, but we'll turn it off in a minute. And I can click on it and you see the little plus. I could also do that from here if I had already turned it off. Now I want to I want to talk about this hole. It only has a distance from this little step. So I see that it has a basic dimension and it has positional tolerance. And play, this little step is datum A. You see that? But where is datum B? Datum B is here on this cylinder. So when it's on a feature of size, something that we can measure, not a plane, something that we can measure the size of, it's on the center axis and it's on the center axis of this diameter of two. So it should be right in alignment with the center axis vertically and then I have 0.25 horizontally. So I wanna project that. Project the geometry, it could be a plane, it could be an axis in the part, doesn't matter because they're right on top of each other anyway. I'm just projecting that and I'm going to go ahead and project this edge because I'm going to be dimensioning to that. So I'm going to put a point in, offset that just back behind it and dimension 0.25. I did it again. Getting good at it. 0.25. Enter. So now that's completely Strain, and you can see that it has a thumbtack here. Now I can type H for a hole, and this is going to be a 1 quarter 20 UNC 2B with a depth of 1. So I'm going to go to a threaded hole, and it has a depth. Now right away, I see two depths here, and that is not correct. I've got one depth on my callout. So do you see this button, full depth of thread? This is how far we're going to tap it down. We're going to use a bottom tap on this that would come from the bottom out. Whenever you cut threads on things, it, it pushes, you know, all the shavings down to the bottom and it makes it gall up. But you, when you top it, tap it from the bottom out, it won't do that. And this is one inch deep. Um, it is one quarter or 0.25. 20 UNC 2B and it has a depth of one. So I always like to go and look at it because I'm nosy and I want to see how far it goes. And I want to talk about this for a second. And I don't know why that went to 0.75, but I'm going to type one enter there and it finished it out. So sorry. So this is one inch. And a lot of times when I drill a hole in something, I go to the center of the next hole when I'm just trying to break out here because you see that it has to break out in a curved surface. And so I just give it that dimension to the center, but we're one inch is good. And I'm going to say, okay, on that one. Now I'm going to turn the visibility off on this thing so I can right click and here's the visibility box, or you can right click here and turn off visibility as well. Now we have the mount done. The material is aluminum 6061. And the good thing about that is it's in the inventor material library. It's very common. And then I'm going to give this some kind of color. And then I'm going to save it. Now we're going to move on to the next part, which is the piston. Let me... Move around here. Let me move up and down. Okay. 